Welcome to Upticks. I'm Jake Falcon, the founder of Falcon Wealth Advisors and your host of Upticks. Today is our 85th episode, Investor Psychology. We've heard a lot of buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. I feel like I'm on a yo-yo. Or a roller coaster? Yo-yo. Okay, fair enough, up and Did down. Did you ever yo-yo before? Yeah, I remember when that was really popular in like elementary school. Remember I had a yo-yo with springs in it. Have you ever, did you see that? It yeah, was really I easy. Yeah, I so, yep. And you had to throw it down yeah, real yeah. hard oh, to yeah. make it sleep? Yep. Sorry, a little tangent on the yo-yo, but uh, thanks for tuning in to episode 85 of Upticks. The market has been all over the place. And what I mean by buy, 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 sell, 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 as I have been out there reaching out to our clients, as Corey and James and Matt and I have been, and um, literally I'll hang up the phone and call somebody else and they're wanting to sell everything, and then I'll hang up the phone and somebody will want to buy as much as possible. So today's episode 85 of Upticks is all around investor psychology. Why is that happening, Corey? Why are some people so scared and some people being overly greedy right now? Can you explain that to me? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'd love to hear this. I think it probably has to do with the way that they perceive their own particular situation. In other words, if somebody mm. feels like, if somebody already has underlying concerns about maybe I don't have enough money, or maybe I need to be doing something differently, something like this is going to cause extra concern. If someone else maybe feels like, I've got plenty of money, I don't need to worry about running out of it, how can I use this to my advantage? It probably has to do with the way that somebody perceives their current situation. Ah, very good. So that's a big part of psychology is that all of us are viewing the world through our own lens and it's very difficult to take a step back and look at the big picture. And I would argue at Falcon Wealth Advisors, that's one of our primary responsibilities is yes. looking at the big picture for our clients and helping them make rational decisions in a very irrational environment. Because don't you feel, I don't know about you, but me, I feel like the last like two weeks, it feels like time is like crawling by. <laughs> and then, there's, but then there's other times where it feels like things go so quickly. My point is like, I feel like right now everyone is so focused on like 24 hours at a time. And maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing, I don't know. But it seems like, you know, with the news cycle, there's a week's worth of news in a day, or a month's worth of news in a day. And it just seems like, you know, we get hyper-focused and people are watching what the futures market does at night. They're watching what the futures market does before the market opens. They're watching what happens during the day and it's like hmm. when you get that focused on something it is hard to just take a step back and zoom out. It's very hard. Yeah, and it's adrenaline. So adrenaline, cortisol, yes. stress, it's our fight or flight yes. response. So, you know, dating back to the days when, you know, we were less civilized and, you know, you had legitimate fears of a lion chasing you or am I going to eat? Yes. Right? And some and some people would either run into that fear or flee. Yes. And I think that's what's happening now is that this fear of running out of money is causing this cortisol heightened levels, this adrenaline. Fight or flight. Fight or flight, right? So people are either, the fighters are running into the fire and saying, buy, buy, buy. And the fleers are saying, sell, sell, sell. And what, what I'm getting at here with investor psychology is that both are wrong. You don't necessarily want to take this as an opportunity to get more aggressive. And you also don't want to take this as an opportunity to get more conservative. You want to go back to your financial plan. Now, I will argue, though, that a younger client, somebody in their 20s or 30s, if they're already too conservative, mm -hmm. this might be an opportunity to get more aggressive. But that would probably be the only instance. I would not recommend somebody get more conservative, though, if they're already too aggressive. It's too late. The damage has been done. Um, so, again, it's just very interesting to me, this whole fight or flight, you know, while that is a very good life-saving technique out in the wilderness, <laughs> it is not a good way to manage your money. And it's interesting to me how quickly, you know, of all my calls I make, the people that are the most fearful uh, don't ever reference their financial plan. It's like they've thrown it out of the window completely and just dis disregarded all of the hours that we've spent talking about planning, looking at projections, looking at averages, talking about debt, talking about investing, all that's been forgotten. It's pretty so, interesting to So me. someone says to you, Jake, well, where in my plan does it say the 
that I'm set up for when the market pulls back 30% in a month. It's in there. Well, where? I haven't seen it. It's in the averages. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> No, I love that though. It's a really good question because that, that, that is a valid. That's what people that ask. That is a very valid response is that you might say, well, look, you're projecting me to make six, 7% a year. And I'm down 10. Right. Again, the averages all average out. It does. We, this isn't the worst market we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it always feels the worst. You know, Every time, right? It always feels the worst. And you know, 2008, I was a financial advisor, and it, it was very similar. You know, people get scared, and we just stick with our process. It's all numbers based. You want to use math, and uh, you know, and solid investments. We know the stocks that we're buying right now, and we're confident that they aren't going to go out of business. It's another quick side note here: is that you don't want to be invested in an index fund when the market's going down. In my opinion, there's no downside protection. So if your advisor has you in a, it's called an ETF, an exchange traded fund, I would be very, very careful um, because you're just riding that wave down. With us, we know what stocks we own. We handpicked them, right? And we know why we own them. And we do take it as an opportunity to buy more. But that's, a, that's another episode altogether. Our point today is the psychology. So again, so if we understand as humans that we are emotional, and I'm not saying emotions are bad, I'm saying emotions are actually a very good and real thing because yes. if we didn't have emotions, life would be very boring and be very bland, right? It'd be very almost like computerized, right? And so you, emotions are good, but what I'm encouraging all of our viewers out there to do is to take a step back and embrace your emotions and recognize that these are just chemical responses in your brain that come from creation or evolution or whatever you want to believe in that we have this built-in internal alert system that will cause us to fight or flee yes and you don't that's good to have that response but you don't need to react to it with your portfolio yes right you don't want to go in there and start ripping up your financial plan or, right. or going crazy i mean that's not where we're at so where are we? So the market's been pulled pulled back crazy. I mean, it's around 30, down 30% so, since when we're filming this and it could get much worse. And we're okay with that. You know, we don't like it, but the financial plan that we build for every client has these types of markets built into it, right? So there's no need to throw that plan out the window. There's no need to fight. There's no need to flee. You wanna stick with the plan. You wanna rebalance. You wanna do what the numbers tell you to do. Know which stocks and bonds you own and why you own them. Uh, and let's embrace those emotions a little bit. What other tips do you have on a psychology standpoint? We're getting a little deep today. Yeah, we are. Uh, I think to your point, you know, just understanding and recognizing, right, that what the emotions are, not to just completely piggyback off what you said, but you know, we're, it's easy to be rational and it's easy to be a calm, cool, collective investor when the market goes up 30% in a year. <laughs> Right? We recognize, well, this can't go on forever, but I'm going to enjoy it while it does. Right, which is fine. Underst understandably so, right? But again, even when we're talking about embracing your emotions on the downside, we really probably should be doing the same thing on the upside also. Yes. But my point is, when that happens, it's easy to be calm and cool and collective. But when things take a downturn, our intellect gets thrown out the window and our emotions jump in the driver's seat. Right. And say, Corey, if you don't hurry up and do something about this, if you don't stop the bleeding, you're going to go broke. I bet there's people whose emotions are telling them that right now. Right. They feel like they have to do something, anything to stop the bleeding. I've got to do something because clearly what I'm doing is not working. Right. And, and in reality, just like life, normally the best action is no action or no reaction. Right. Embrace the emotion. It's just like people that suffer from road rage. Exactly. Right? When somebody cuts you off and you get mad and you start honking the horn. Uh, and then you kind of kick yourself later for acting like a jerk, right? Maybe the better response is just to embrace the emotion, feel it, and, and actually, believe it or not, that lets it dissipate far faster than trying to fight it or react. That's exactly what was in a blog post that I just wrote. Good. Was about that road rage specifically. Was it? Yes. I didn't read it. Or if you've ever, you know, <laughs> if you've ever got upset at someone and yelled at them, or you're upset at something going on in your life and you. God forbid, take it out on your spouse, which I would never do. Just kidding. Don't but, yell at Cassie. Uh, no, I know. I'm just saying, though, you know, those things happen. <laughs> or maybe it's at a family member or whoever. Right. And then afterwards, it's like, I'm sorry that that just happened. It's, your, it's just a release, right? Somebody's just, they're venting, it's emotions. And afterward, it's like, that probably wasn't the right thing to do, and I'm sorry about that. Right. It's the exact same approach here with your portfolio. Yes. You don't want to look back a year, two, right. three, five years from now and say, wow, 
I really wish I wouldn't have made that decision based upon my emotions at the time. Yeah, what about all those people back, and these weren't our clients, but with all the people back in 2008 when they got scared and they sold out of the market, mm -hmm. the market went up 300% over the next decade or so. And again, these people will never admit it, but a lot of them stayed out and they missed that whole run back up. So what we're arguing is that this too shall pass. I've said that a lot lately. And the market will run back up. When? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it's going to bottom either. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. Believe it or not, you have to be okay with the unknown here. Um, what if you're not? What if somebody says, I thought I understood that, but now I don't. I, don't, I, I think I'm too risky. I would, I would uh, stress highly that they stated a plan first. Mm -hmm. That's first cause. It's like, look, let's go back to your financial plan. I would bring them into the office and I would say, let's look at the plan. The market pullback's already built into the plan. Let's look at it. Does it still look good or not? And if they still say, Jake, I can't handle it, then maybe we do. Maybe they should never have been invested in stocks in the first place. So then I would want to rerun that plan. If we sold all your stocks and we put you all in cash or bonds, now what does your plan look like? And I've had clients do this actually, and not in bad markets typically, but I've had clients say, I don't want to have anything to do with stocks and we'll rerun their plan. And if the bonds or cash work, I'm not opposed to that, by the way. I don't take any of this personally. You know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be a behavioral psychologist to my clients and help them avoid making a very, very dumb mistake. Which, in my opinion, a dumb mistake is selling when things are low and buying in when other things are high. Very easy way to lose money. Right? Yeah. And I, and so that's I, how I would do it. I, I, at first, my job as a fiduciary minded advisor is to act only in our client's best interest, coach them off the ledge. If, I, if they can't be saved, I want to make sure that they know the permanent decision they're making and the potential long term impacts that's going to have. It's really all we can do, right? What, do you, what would you do? Corey, I don't care. I'm scared. I don't want to be in the market. What do you, how do you answer that? Very similar. Same to what way. You good, did, right? Corey. Good answer. We've worked together for a long time. We now. have worked together. We've been through a lot of good markets and we've been through a lot of bad markets. You know, and I'm, all, I'm only in my late 30s. You're in your early 30s. And I'm sure we'll see a lot more of this to come. But the good news is we've been doing this long enough. We've gotten enough people through it, both retired and pre retired, um, that we, this isn't anything different. We, it always feels different, but we've had markets like this. We've had 9 11, right? I was in college, obviously, but the market persisted. We had the dot-com bubble burst, yeah. you know? I was in college with the market persisted. We had 08, I was very much a financial advisor during the worst, second worst market of all time. And we've gotten through all of it. We've gotten through all of it. The market has, not me. Right, well, the market to do anything, and we're yeah. gonna get, but the market's gonna get through this too. It is. The sun will shine again. And you would be a fool to think companies, you know, out there, you know, and compliance doesn't like me to list off specific companies, but you can just think of some <laughs> of the world's largest companies out there making yes. money. A lot of these companies have to do with home delivery and technology, social media companies. None of that stuff's going away. There are companies that are going to go bankrupt. You have to understand that. It is going to happen. And the whole idea with our portfolio, because we buy individual stocks, we're, our idea is we're buying stocks that we don't think are going to go bankrupt. Correct. If you're an exchange traded fund, more than likely something in your portfolio may go to zero. It could happen. right? And you have no idea. So again, Good time to review your portfolio. Good time to kick the tires on your advisor. Um, with us, we're sticking to the math. Both of you, you and I have studied out at University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School. We took an investment strategies program out there as a week-long rigorous course um, that taught us that using math works. And that's why we do it this way. One thing I want to add that's just interesting about the psychology that we're talking about is it, it probably makes sense after the market was on a 11, 10, 11 year bull run, it makes sense that people's risk tolerance is probably they think they're riskier yes, than they actually are. They always but do. The same thing's gonna happen on the downside, right? So after you see things pull back, people are gonna think I'm more conservative than I really am. Right. But so it's all, it kind of has to do with that moment in time, right? It's gonna change. It's not just gonna be the static, well, here's where I fall on the scale, regardless of the conditions of what's happening around me, right? Because we're, we're humans. Yep, and it's a huge problem, actually. Millennials, um, there's been studies proven that millennials' portfolios are far too conservative because they grew up remembering the 08 environment. And so they're actually costing themselves millions of dollars by being too conservative. I think on the flip side of that though, I think part of the reason that you're having a lot of conversations and I am too with clients about when's it time to buy. I think that there are a lot of people that do also have the memory of, if it wasn't them, a friend of theirs or a family member or somebody who got out at the wrong time. Right. Like people remember what happened when someone did that and about how they completely blew themselves up. Yes. And they don't want to let that happen, so they'd rather be 
you call it greedy, call it opportunistic, call it whatever you want. I would call it opportunistic. They're just saying, well, I know that's not the right thing to do. And I think that's the reason this go around, people are able to have that perspective a little bit more is because they know what happened a decade ago. Right. That's interesting. So uh, again, takeaway for today's uh, show is don't let your emotions dictate your long-term investment decisions. It's a fool's game. You're going to mess things up, right? Just like in life, don't honk your horn. Somebody cuts you off, right? You're right. <laughs> you, and you I've been there. I've done it. <laughs> you see like that jerk, that. I, you know, I want to go don't speed yell up at the and, pizza yeah, delivery no, I, boy I, for being late. You're going to regret it. You're yeah, going to regret it. Yeah. How many times have you acted on your emotions and been really proud? Uh, at the top of my head, I can't think of any. Yeah, I know. I don't know if I can either. How, you know, how many times? I can I, think of the remorse that's come with doing right. that. Right. Same thing with money. Don't let your emotions dictate your decisions. Call us. We're here. Our team is here. We're working very hard. Uh, we've been reaching out to many clients. Clients have been calling us, emailing us. You can reach us on social media. Here's a quick plug. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. Our, our base is growing. Uh, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, we appreciate that as well. Okay, so now on to a quick fun topic, Corey, is we had another poll out there, I think a week or two ago on Facebook, and it, uh, it asked our Facebook followers, are you, um, do you enjoy watching football better or baseball? Hmm. Let's hear it, Corey, what's your answer? What's your answer, then what do you think people answered? My answer, baseball, what I think people answered, football. And the reason for that is because of the psychology. The Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. Yeah, and baseball's boring. But anyways. It can be your opinion. <laughs> and uh, what, would you, what do you think the percentage was that answered football then, if you think more people chose football? There was uh, 70. 22, 22 people participated. 86% said football. Wow. I like baseball live, probably better than football live, like in person. Uh, I enjoy the Royals winning the World Series, obviously. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm probably 50-50 on that. Maybe 60, 60% I like football better, me personally. You're, yeah, I, I think that's just missing the point, though. That's, that's, the, that's the great thing about baseball. No, there's a lot going on. In, I know you're a baseball guy, and there's a lot going on in that game. There's a lot going on in football, too. Right. But anyways. In its own right, I agree. <laughs> so, uh, so real quick before we wrap up the show, is there anything? Uh, I know we've been really busy. Both of us have been working very long hours helping protect our clients' capital. Is there anything fun going on in your life? You've got any new books, shows? I know your, your uh, marathon that you were going to run, your half marathon got canceled. So is there anything new in your life do you want to share? Still married? Still married, yes. Uh, <laughs> Good. No, aside from that, I mean, most everything's getting canceled. So I'm just uh, taking advantage of the opportunity here. Um, as a result of that, to just kind of hunker down, stay focused on um, the things that are healthy for me to do personally. You got uh, any TV shows? Everybody's quarantined in right now. You got any shows? You know, not really. I got three. I got three shows. I don't watch that much TV. If you, well, I do a lot. <laughs> what so you got? I got McMillions. Okay. Uh, about the Monopoly game at McDonald's that was uh, corrupted by the mob. Just crazy. I guess the, I don't know. Yeah, I think the mob was involved. Uh, that's a good one. If you haven't seen that, I highly recommend. Rachel and I enjoyed that one a lot. I'm a big fan of Narcos, which is on Netflix. Um, it's about the drug cartel in Mexico. Um, it's really good. I just fin finished season two of that. And then another one Rachel and I are watching is Dirty Money on Netflix also. Mm -hmm. Dirty Money has a bunch of these crooks out there. Um, Was it a new season? Yeah, Dirty Money. Yeah, there is a new one. I out. didn't realize that, okay. So there you go, you got something to watch now. Gotta plug back in. Pretty good, yeah. So, and I've been reading a lot of books. I'm reading a book about options trading right now. I'm reading a book uh, about Jim Sim Simons, who's probably one of the best hedge fund managers of all time. And I'm reading a book about retirement. I'm reading three books at once right now. And um, watching three TV shows. I am. I'm How bit, do you do it I'm all? I'm quarantined, like everybody else. So. <laughs> I don't go anywhere, uh, so you gotta do something. And um, Rachel and I did a fun puzzle also. She did most of it. Do you listen to, do you listen to podcasts ever for leisure? Sure. Um, like Beyond Just Business? Do you no. ever listen to anything non-business um, non no. related? Do you? Yeah, it's kind of something well, I started you throw doing a podcast that I out there. What's a good podcast? You know, there's one that I found that I really like. It's called, actually there's two. One's called The Knowledge Project, uh, and one is called Stuff You Should Know. It's that simple. And these guys, it's interesting. I mean, they, I mean, some of the stuff that I like, I found myself listening to a fairly long episode about is like something totally random that I didn't think I'd be that interested in. But you are. But I am. That's and they do cool. a really good job, and they do a really good deep dive into things. Like I listened to an episode. I was in the car. I thought it was interesting, but it was literally about like 
the 911 emergency phone system mm. and like its origination and how they're trying to make changes to it in the That's world of cool. cell phones. But just random stuff like That's that. That's pretty cool. I think it's pretty So you listen in the car, on the treadmill, when do you listen to these things? Yeah, or you know, around, I've got I've got to the point where like just around the house a lot. Like if I'm just like <laughs> I bet Cassie loves that. Yeah, yeah, she does. Well, she's in the other room, or I'm just if I'm you, you know, just put your headphones in, or doing dishes or whatever. I mean, something that simple. Yeah. Really? Yes. Hmm. So the TV is really. It's, Rachel does that. Yeah. Rachel goes on a walk, listens to a book, and then I'll find her when I'm leaving for for work for the day. She'll have the book still playing in her ear while she's walking around the house. Yeah. I can't do that. Really? When I listen to podcasts, I do it when I go for walks or exercise, but I also like, uh, I don't like to walk around and, and do it. I, I lay on the couch if I'm listening or in bed. Which probably helps you focus and take it in a little bit better. Yeah, and again, most of the, almost all the podcasts it's I listen to are business related, related yeah. for finance. So anyways, well, thanks for sharing. Hopefully you get some good recommendations. We'd love to hear your recommendations. Uh, certainly you can email me directly if you have any questions or comments about the show. My email address is jake at falconwealthadvisors.com and Corey yours. Corey at falconwealthadvisors.com. Thanks for tuning in. And again, watch those emotions. They're a good thing. You just don't want to respond to them. And we hope you all have a great week.